everybody. Welcome to this month's episode of The Mashup Factory, where culture and commerce collide. What do books and public transportation have in common? If you've been on a commuter rail lately, it's probably hard to imagine that at one time, taking the Long Island Railroad was an ultra-elite experience reserved only for the privileged few, with ornate parlor bars and mahogany-paneled and gas-lit dining cars serving four-star cuisine that rivaled some of the best restaurants in the city. The books that people read on those trains have also come down more than a few pegs on the status scale since the days when a book cost as much as an average American family earned in six months. So, what will become of these pillars of the American experience? Today, on Long Island, the birthplace of the American suburb and the home of the very first American commuter railroad, we're going in search of what books and public transportation have in common. I hear the train a coming, it's rolling around the bend, and I ain't seen the sunshine since I don't know when. I'm stuck in Folsom Prison, and time keeps dragging on. But that train keeps rolling all out of San Down around the corner, a half a mile from here, you see them old trains running and your boxes oh, disappear. <laughs> so we're here at the East Hampton train station, the home of the LIRR out on the East End. Even though, as we all know, that uh, train travel today is not quite the luxury experience it once was, back in the day, in the 1800s, uh, the trains that passed through here were for the Uber elite. So we're going to actually go into the East Hampton train station that was once the uh, home of the luxury elite more reflective of what public transportation has become and why it needs a new makeover. Not really a luxury experience, more like an abandoned pit. Can you believe that this is actually a historic landmark? Clearly an area of society ready to be reimagined. Most uh, luxury transportation vehicles, as you'll see today, are uh, very heavily infused with technology and run on apps. Not quite so much the case with the LIRR, making it a uh, vehicle of transport in much need of reinvention. Well, you don't know what we can find. Why don't you come with me, little girl, on a magic carpet ride? Well, you don't know. So here we are today at Harper's Books, right in the middle of downtown East Hampton, and we're in front of one of the coolest places that is um, leading the trend of bookstores reimagined as luxury experiences. Uh, interesting, this is taking place in East Hampton, which is one of the meccas of art married with commerce that's setting trends that are being followed all around the world. Harper's Books is known for fusing different types of art and photography, specifically together with a book experience, to reimagine what bookstores can be. Let's go in and take a look. Look inside the left the sound. We're here with Harper Levine today at Harper's Books in East Hampton. Harper, thanks for being with us. Thank you so much for coming. Well, Harper's Books began in 1997 as a small business in St. Paul, Minnesota. It's right when the internet started. Okay. And at that point, we were just selling rare books. Actually, they weren't even so rare. It was basically, we would okay. go to other used and rare bookstores, we'd buy a book for $5 and sell it for $15. And when did you start to think about the trend of fusing, you know, art and, and, and you know, into commerce, the commerce of selling books? That was when we moved here, which was in the fall of 2001. It was through having the shop and interacting with artists that we really saw how these two things, books and art, mixed. Said alcohol is not inspirational. So we actually just walked down the street uh, a few feet and we have another uh, art book gallery called Glenn Horowitz Bookseller. It's very, very interesting that within a two foot radius that the new trend 
um, going against the grain of Amazon supposedly putting bookstores out of business. Clearly, this is the wave of the future. Books reimagined as luxury experiences, fusing art and commerce together. Hello world, here's a song that we're singing. Come on, get happy. We're here in East Hampton in front of the Palm. It's very interesting that, you know, as we look at how public transportation is continuing to become more and more of a luxury experience, the Jitney actually started that trend a while back, offering a luxury experience from the Hamptons uh, back to Manhattan and to helping to transform the commuter experience. And then a couple of years ago, uh, Ambassador launched their uh, offering, which was even a step up above the Jitney. So we're, we're, we're awaiting the arrival of the two luxury buses here, uh, but we're also going to be exploring how that trend is continuing to evolve with the advent of technology. You know, just like Uber has revolutionized how people get around a lot of metropolitan locations, the Hamptons is no different. Uh, we have the Hamptons Hopper that was launched this summer that's an app-driven device that is designed to really help people with local commuting and travel. You just click on it. It tells you all the different points of where the buses are located in real time so you can track your ride. It also gives you um, an overview of all the different places that it stops. So Southampton Village, East Hampton Village, places like Cyril's Fish House, Montauk Village, and the famous Lobster Lunch Room. Okay, this is the Ride Cal app, which uh, just launched this week in LA, and it's also available all over the San Francisco Valley. Really cool app that basically allows you to commute to and from work, uh, GPS system based for a very economical fee. So we're here at the East Hampton Airport as we're concluding our journey and we wanted to stop and see, you know, this is what luxury uh, transportation used to be all about, only available to the Uber elites. Uh, you know, these are private jets. Uh, the rides themselves cost in the thousands of dollars. The planes themselves cost in the multi-millions. Uh, but Blade, which is the uh, latest uh, app from Uber, launched this summer. And it's a um, charter-shared uh, Uber Elite helicopter service that flies back and forth from the Hamptons. One of the first to help reimagine uh, public transportation. So uh, we're going to show you some footage of uh, app of Blade in progress, but we wanted to show you uh, the runways of East Hampton of yesterday and today and tomorrow. Harper Books in the Hamptons to new generation luxury buses like Boston's Bridge or Silicon Valley's Ride Pal, and indie bookstores like Parnassus Books in Nashville or the last bookstore in Los Angeles, the glory days of books and public transportation are making a comeback. And just like the railroad coming through way back in the 1800s shaped East Hampton into the mecca of haute culture that it is today, pockets of innovation are popping up all along these new tracks of innovation, changing the way we travel, work, and play. I'm Billy Howard, wishing you happy tales and happy trails. I never followed the rules. Oh well.